In this video, we're going to do a nice calculus 2 question. So we're going to find the formula for the power series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n cubed times x to the n. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Okay, now let's first find the range of x values that we can plug in to get a valid answer. So let's use the ratio test. So this is a calculus 2 series test that we use for convergence. So we want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. We want to plug in n plus 1 for n here. So this will be n plus 1 quantity cubed times x to the n plus 1. Just plugging in n plus 1 for n of the original, which in the series, or in the sum, all over the original, which is n cubed times x to the n. Now if this is less than 1, it will converge. Okay, so we can split this, so it'd be the limit as n goes to infinity. We have the absolute value of the quantity n plus 1 over n quantity cubed. But make sure you do the absolute value still when you separate it, because this over this, x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, the x to the n term will cancel, leaving us with just x under the absolute value. So now this has nothing to do with n, so we can use parentheses around the limit. So as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 goes to n, so this goes to 1, leaving us with absolute value of x, and we need this to be less than 1. So this is our, this is what we need for the function to converge. Okay, now let's evaluate this. So we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n cubed times x to the n. Now, if we look at the n equals 0 term, 0 cubed times x to the 0, which it, 0 times anything is 0. So we can actually add back the original term, so the sum as n equals 0 to infinity of n cubed times x to the n. Now let's look at something else. Say we have a function f of x. If we integrate it, we get the antiderivative f of x plus a constant. So this will be capital F of x plus c. We don't want c, so we can just differentiate it again, and this will get rid of the c's. So this is an identity for f of x. So f of x equals the derivative of the integral of f of x. So we can do this kind of here. But for this to happen, so we want n cubed to go away slowly. So n cubed, we want it to go to n squared over n is n squared, obviously. So the only way to get this is if we have n minus 1. So we can't just do that. We have to multiply by x because we're, we're subtracting x on the amount of x's, so we have to multiply by x to get the same amount of x's. Okay, so this is x. Now we can do the derivative of the integral, and the integral of this, so the integral of x to the n minus 1 is x to the n over n, leaving us with the n squared, so this will actually reduce itself. So the sum as n equals 0 to infinity of n squared times x to the n. That's when we integrate it. Okay, so now we have x times the derivative of the sum. So let's take out an x. So we're going to use parentheses because we have to deriv take the derivative of this. So that we have x times the derivative of the integral again, reducing the n squared to n. So we have the derivative of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n x to the n. Okay, we're going to do this one more time. So we have x times the derivative of x times the derivative of, okay, so we're going to have x we're going to take out, and then we have another derivative of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n, because n over n is 1, obviously. Okay. Well, what, what is this? This is, so you plug in n equals 0, so you get x to the 0, which is 1, all over 1 minus the ratio, which is x. So this is 1 over 1 minus x. Okay. Now, the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, so this will be negative 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared times, because this is linear, so you can do this, times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 over 1 minus x squared. So this is a nice formula for that. Okay, so this will be, let's repeat what we wrote. So this is x times the derivative of x times the derivative of, okay, so we have, so this in total is the derivative of this 
which is 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. But then we have x times it. Okay, so that would be, so let's rewrite this a little bit. So this will be the derivative of x over 1 minus x quantity squared. Okay, two parentheses, yep. So now let's do this derivative really fast. So this we're going to use the quotient rule. So this will be the bottom. We're going to square it. So 1 minus x quantity squared, and then we're going to square that. That will be 1 minus x to the fourth power. Okay, so we have low, which is the bottom function, times the derivative of the top function. The derivative of x is 1 minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function, which will be 2 times 1 minus x to the first power times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1. Okay, but we know that negative 1 times another negative in the front will just turn into plus, positive 1. Okay, you see we have 1 minus x squared here, we have 1 minus x here, and this is one term. So we can just divide by 1 minus x, leaving us with, on, divide by 1 minus x on the top and the bottom, so we're going to have 1 minus x to the first power, plus x, plus 2x, because we have 2 in the parentheses, 2x, all over 1 minus x, to the third power. So we just remove this term from every, from the top and the bottom. Okay. So minus x plus 2x is 1x. This is pl 1 plus x all over 1 minus x quantity to the third power. Okay. So after we take the derivative, we have to multiply it by this x. Okay. So we're going to have x. Okay. Let's look at this again. So we have x times the derivative. So we're going to have x, so okay, let's multiply x into this. So x times 1 plus x is x plus x squared all over 1 minus x cubed. Right? Yes. Okay. So now, it still looks kind of hard, but we're, we're getting to the end. So this will be, okay, so x times, we're going to do another quotient rule. So the bottom squared again will be 1 minus x to the sixth power, okay. So we're gonna do the bottom function times the derivative of the top function. The derivative of x plus x squared is one plus two x. Then we're gonna have minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function. So the derivative of one minus x cubed, that'll be a chain rule again. So this will be three times one minus x squared times negative one, because that's the derivative of the inside. Negative one times negative one in the front will turn into a positive one, leaving us with this. Okay, now again, we have a one minus x quantity squared here. We have a one minus x quantity cubed here. So let's divide by one minus x quantity squared because that's the lowest power of one minus x on the top and the bottom. So we're gonna have x times Okay, we're going to have 1 minus x to the third power minus 2, because we're dividing by it, times 1 plus 2x plus, so we're going to have 3 times this, which will be 3x plus 3x squared. Okay, all over 1 minus x, so we have 1 minus x to the sixth power minus 2, because we divide by that one term, so that would be 4. Okay, so let's put everything together. So we have x on the top. So we're going to have x all over 1 minus x to the fourth power. Let's make more room. Okay, so we're going to have x times. So this, let's, mul let's multiply it above. So this will be 1 times 1 plus 2x, which is 1 plus 2x. Minus x times 1 plus 2x is minus x minus 2x squared. Okay, okay, let's look at this. So 3x squared minus 2x squared is x squared. So let's write x squared first because it's the highest power we have on the top in the multiplication. Okay, so we're gonna have 2x minus x, which is x, right? So this is x plus 3x. So we have x plus 3x, which is 4x. And then finally we have one. Okay. And that is the answer to the formula that we just found.
or the, the power series equation or expression. So we have the absolute value of x is less than 1 is the, uh, the requirement for this series to work. And that is the end of the video. Hope you liked it. And thanks for watching.